Hello and welcome to tonight's Torah portion. Before we begin, however, I'm going to read our customary blessings. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us with the commandments and commanded us to engross ourselves with the words of Torah. Please, Lord our God, sweeten the words of your Torah in the mouths and in the mouths of all your people Israel, that we and our offspring, and the offspring of your people, the, pe the house of Israel, may we all together know your name and study your Torah for the sake of fulfilling your desire. Blessed are you, Lord, who teaches the Torah to his people Israel. Blessed are you, Lord our God, King of the universe, who chose us from all the nations and gave us the Torah. Blessed are you, Lord, giver of the Torah. May the Lord bless you and keep watch over you. May the Lord make his presence enlighten you. And may he be kind to you. And may the Lord bestow favor on you and grant you peace. Bishim Yeshua. Amen. Tonight's reading is Vaelic. He went. Our Torah for tonight's Deuteronomy 31, 1 through 30. 1 Samuel 1, 1 through 10, and chapter 1 through 2, and chapter 10. Hosea 14, 1 through 2, 9 through 10. Joel 2, 15 through 27. Micah 7, 18 through 20. Zechariah 14, 1 through 21. But Hadesha, Luke 24, 14 through 13 through 43, Romans 9, 30 through 10, 13, Hebrews 12, 1 through 17, 1 Thessalonians 4, 13 through 18. Deuteronomy 3, 1 through 29. So Moses continued to speak these words to all of Israel. And he said to them, I am 120 years old today. I am no, I am no longer able to go out and come in. Yahuwah has said to me, you shall no longer go over this Jordan. Yahuwah, your Elohim himself will go over before you. You will destroy these nations before you so that you shall dispossess them. And Yah Joshua shall go over the, at your head as Yahuwah has spoken. And Yahuwah will do to them as he did to Sion. And Og, the kings of the Amorites, into their land he, when he destroyed them. And Yahweh will give them over to you. And you shall do to them according to the whole commandment that I have commanded you. Be strong and courageous. Do not fear or be in dread of them. For it is Yahweh your Elohim who goes with you. He will not leave you or forsake you. Then Moses summoned Joshua and said to him in the sight of all Israel, Be strong and courageous. For you shall go with these people into the land that Yahweh has sworn to their fathers to give them, and you shall put them in possession of it. It, it is Yahweh who goes before you, he will be with you. He will not leave you or forsake you, do not fear or be dismayed. Then Moses wrote this law and gave it to the priest, the son of Levi who carried the Ark of the Covenant to all the elders of Israel, and Moses commanded them. At the end of every seven years, at the time of the year of release, at the Feast of Booths, when all Israel comes to appear before Yahweh your Elohim at the place that he will choose, you shall read this law before all Israel in their hearing. Assemble the people, men, women, and little ones, and the sojourner within your towns, that they may hear and learn to fear Yahweh your Elohim and be careful to do all the words of this law. And to their children who have not known it, may he may hear and learn to fear Yahweh your Elohim as long as you live in the land that you are going over the Jordan to possess. And Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, the days approach when you must die. Call jo Joshua and present yourselves in a tent of meeting that I may commission him. And Moses and Joshua went and presented themselves in the tent of meeting and Yahweh appeared in the tent in a pillar of cloud and a pillar of cloud stood over the entrance of the tent. And Yahweh said to Moses, Behold, you are about to lie down with your fathers. Then this people will rise and whore after the foreign gods among them in the land that they are entering, and they will forsake me and break my covenant that I have made with them. They will kindle, they, then my anger will be kindled against them in that day. 
and I will forsake them and and hide my face from them. And they will be devoured and many evils and troubles will come upon them so that they will say in that day, Have not these evils come upon us because our Elohim is not among us? And I will surely hide my face in that day because of all the evil that they have done because they have turned to other gods. Now therefore write this song and teach it to the people of Israel. Put it in their mouths that this song may be a witness for me against the people of Israel. For when I brought them into the land flowing with milk and honey, which I swore to give their fathers, and they have eaten and are full and grown fat, they will turn to other gods and serve them and despise me and break my covenant. And when many evils and troubles have come upon them, this song shall confront them as a witness. For it will live unforgotten in the mouths of their offspring. For I know what they are inclined to do even today before I have brought them into the land that I have sworn to give. So Moses wrote this song the same day and taught it to the people of Israel. And Yahweh commissioned Joshua, the son of Nun, and said, Be strong and courageous, for you shall bring the people of Israel into the land that I swore to give them, and I will be with you. When Moses had finished writing the words of this law in a book to the very end, Moses commanded the Levites who carried the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh, Take the, this book of the law and put it by the side of the, the Ark of the Covenant of Yahweh your Elohim, that it may be there for you a witness against you. For I know how rebellious and stubborn you are. Behold, even today while I am yet alive with you, you have been rebellious against Yahweh. How much more after my death? Assemble to me all the elders of your tribes and your officers, that I may speak these words in their ears, and call heaven and earth to witness against them. For I know that after my death you will surely act corruptly, and turn aside from the way that I have commanded you. And in the days to come evil will befall you, because you do what is evil in the sight of Yahweh, provoking him to anger through the works of your hand. 1 Samuel 1, 1 through 2, 10. There was a certain man of Ramathian Zophim, of the hill country of Ephraim, whose name was Elkanah, the son of Joraham, son of Elihu, son of Tohu, son of Zuf, and an Aphrathite. He had two wives. The name of one was Hannah, and the name of the other was Penina. And Penina had children, but Hannah had none. Now this man used to go up year by year from his city to worship and sacrifice to Yahweh of hosts at Shiloh. There were two sons of Eli, Hophni and Phinehas, the priests of Yahweh. On that day when Elkanah sacrificed, he would give portions to Phinehas, his Pen Penina, his wife, and to, his sons, to all her sons and daughters. And to Hannah he gave a double portion, because he loved her, though Yahweh had closed her womb. And her rival used to provoke her, griev grievously to irritate her, because Yahweh had closed her womb. So it went on year by year. As often as she went up to the house of Yahweh, Yahweh she used to provoke her. Therefore Hannah wept and would not eat. And Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Hannah, why do you weep? And why do you not eat? And why is your heart sad? Am I not more to you than ten sons? After they had eaten and, and drunk in Shiloh, Hannah rose. Now Eli the priest was sitting on the seat beside the door post of the temple of Yahweh. She was deeply distressed and prayed to Yahweh and wept bitterly. And she vowed a vow and said, O Lord of hosts, if you will indeed look upon the affliction of your servant and remember me and not forget your servant, but will give your servant a son, then I will give him to Yahweh all the days of his life, and no razor shall touch his head. As she continued praying before Yahweh, Eli observed her mouth. Hannah was speaking in her heart. Only her lips moved, and her voice was not heard. Therefore Eli took her to be a drunken woman. And Eli said to her, How long will you go on being drunk? Put, a, put your wine away from you. But Hannah answered, No, my lord. I am a woman troubled in spirit. I have drunk neither wine nor strong drink, but I have been pouring out my soul before Yahweh. Do not regard your servant as worthless woman, for all along I have been speaking out of my great anxiety and vexation. Then Eli answered her, Go in peace, and the Elohim of Israel grant your petition that you have made to him. 
And she said, Let your servant find favor in your eyes. Then the woman went her way and ate, and her face no longer sad, was no longer sad. They rose early in the morning and worshipped before Yahweh. Then they went back to their house in Ramah, and Elkanah knew, Hannah's, knew Hannah his wife, and Yahweh remembered her. In due time, Hannah conceived and bore a son. She called his name Samuel, for she said, I have asked for him from Yahweh. The man Elkanah and his house, and all his house, went up to offer to Yahweh the yearly sacrifice and to pay his vow. But Hannah did not go up, for she said to her husband, As soon as the child is weaned, I will bring him, so that he may appear in the presence of Yahweh and dwell there forever. Elkanah, her husband, said to her, Do what seems best to you. Wait until you have weaned him. Only may Yahweh establish his words, so that. So the woman remained and nursed her son until she was weaned, and when she had weaned him, she took him up with her, along with a three-year-old bull, an ephah of flour, and a skin of fine wine. And she brought him to the house of Yahweh at Shiloh, and the child was young. Then they slaughtered the bull, and they brought the child to Eli. And she said, O oh, my Lord, as, my, as I live, as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who is standing here in your presence praying to Yahweh. For this child I prayed, and Yahweh has granted me my petition that I have made to him. Therefore I lent him to Yahweh as long as he lives. He is lent to Yahweh. And he worshipped Yahweh there. And Hannah prayed and said, My heart exalts in Yahweh. My horn is exalted in Yahweh. My mouth derides my enemies because I rejoice in your salvation. There is none holy like Yahweh. For there is none beside you. There is no rock like Elohim. Talk no more so very proudly. Let not arrogance come from your mouth. For Yahweh is a Elohim of knowledge. And by him actions are weighed. The bow bows of the many are broken, but they f the feeble mind, the feeble bind on strength. Those who are full have hired themselves out for bread, but those who are hungry have ceased to hunger. The barren has borne seven, but she who has many sons is forlorn. Yahweh kills and brings to life. He brings down the Sheol and raises up. Yahweh makes poor and makes rich. He brings low and he exalts. He raises up the poor from the dust, and he lifts the needy from the ash heap to make them sit with the princes and inherit the seat of honor, a seat of honor. For the pillars of the earth are Yahweh's, and on them he has set the world. He will guard the feet of his faithful ones, but the wicked shall be cut off in darkness. For not by might shall a man prevail. The adversaries of Yahweh shall be broken to pieces. Against them he will thunder in heaven. Yahweh will judge the ends of the earth. He will give strength to his king and exalt the horns of his anointed. Hos Hosea 14, 1, 2, 9, and 10. I think I messed that one up, but it's Hosea. <laughs> Return, O Israel, to Yahweh your Elohim, for you have stumbled because of your iniquity. Take with you words and return to Yahweh and say to him, Take away all iniquity, except what is good. And we will pay with bulls the vows of our lips. Assyria shall not save us. We will not ride on horses, and we will say no more our Elohim to the works of our hands. And you, the orphan, finds mercy. I will hear their apostasy, and I will love them freely, for my anger has turned from them. I will be like the dew to Israel. He shall blossom like the lily. He shall take root like the trees of Lebanon. His shoots shall spread out. His beauty shall be like the olive. And his fragrance like Lebanon. They shall return and dwell beneath my shadow. They shall flourish like the grain. They shall blossom like the vine. Their fame shall be like the wine of Lebanon. O Ephraim, what have I to do with idols? It is I who answer and look after you. I am like the evergreen cypress, from me comes your fruit. Whoever is wise, let him understand these things. Whoever is discerning, let him know them. For the ways of Yahweh are right, and the upright walk in them, but the transgressors stumble in them. Joel 2, 15-27 Blow the trumpet in Zion, 
Consecrate a fast. Call a solemn, solemn assembly. Gather the people. Consecrate the, con the congregation. Assemble the elders. Gather the children, even the nursing infants. Let the bridegroom leave his room and the bride her chamber. Between the vestibule and the altar, let the priests of the minister of Yahweh weep and say, Spare your people, O Yahweh, and make not your heritage a reproach, a byword among the nations. Why should they say among the people, Where is their Elohim? Then Yahweh became jealous for his land and had pity on his people. Yahweh answered and said to his people, Behold, I am sending you grain, wine, and oil, and you will be satisfied, and I will no longer make you a reproach among the nations. A reproof. I will remove the northern, northerner far from you, and drive him into a parched and desolate land, his vanguard into the eastern sea, and his rear guard into the western sea. This, the stench and foul smell of him will rise, for he has done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for Yahweh has done great things. Fear not, you beasts of the field, for the pleasures, for the pastures of the wilderness are green, the trees bear its fruit, and the fig tree and vine give their full yield. Be glad, O children of Zion, and rejoice in Yahweh your Elohim, for he has given you the early rain for your vindication. He has poured down for you abundant rain, the early and the latter rain as before. The threshing floor shall be full of grain, the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. I will restore to you the years that the swarming locusts have has eaten the hopper, the destroyer, and the cutter, my great army which I sent among you. You shall eat plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of Yahweh your Elohim who has dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never again be put to shame. You shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am Yahweh your Elohim. And there is none else. And my people shall never again be put to shame. Micah 7, 18-20 who is, who is a Elohim like you, pardoning iniquity and passing over transgression for the remnant of his inheritance? He does not retain his anger forever, because he delights in steadfast love. He will again have compassion on us. He will tread our iniquities underfoot. You will cast all our sins into the depths of the sea. You will show faithfulness to Jacob and steadfast love to Abraham, as you have sworn to our fathers from the days of old. Zechariah 14, 1-21 Behold, a day is coming for Yahweh, when the spoil taken from you will be divided in, in your midst. For I will gather all the nations against Jerusalem to battle, and the city shall be taken, and the house plundered, and the woman raped. Half of the city shall go out into exile, and the rest of the people shall not be cut off from the city. Then Yahweh will go out and fight against those nations as when he fights on the day of battle. On that day his feet shall stand on the Mount of Olives that lies before Jerusalem on the east. And the Mount of Olives shall be split in two from east to west by a very wide valley. So that one half of the mount shall move to the northward and the other half southward. And you shall flee to the valleys of my mountains. For the valley of the mountain shall reach to Azul. And you shall flee as you fled from the earthquake in the days of Uz Uz Uziah, king of Judah. Then Yahweh your Elohim will come and all the holy ones with him. On that day there shall be no light, cold or frost, and there shall be a unique day, which is known to Yahweh, neither day or, nor night, but in evening time there shall be a light. On that day living waters shall flow out of Jerusalem, half of them to the eastern sea and half of them to the western sea. It shall continue in summer as in winter, and Yahweh will be king over all the earth on that day, and Yahweh will be one, and his name will be one. The whole land shall be turned into a plain from Geba to Raimon, south of Jerusalem, but Jerusalem shall remain aloft on its site from the, the gate of Benjamin to the place of the former gate to the corner gate, and from the tower of Hanel to the king's wine presses, and it shall be inhabited and there shall never again be a decree of utter destruction. Jerusalem shall dwell in security. And this shall be a plague with which Yahweh will strike all the people that wage war against Jerusalem. Their flesh will rot while they are standing on their feet. Their eyes will rot in their sockets, and their tongues will rot in their mouths. And on that day a great panic from Yahweh shall fall on them, so that each will seize 
the hand of another, and the hand of the one will be raised against the hand of the other. Even Judah will fight at Jerusalem, and the wealth of all the surrounding nations shall be collected, gold, silver, and garments in great abundance. And a plague like this plague shall fall on the horses, the mules, and the camels, and the donkeys, and whatever beasts may be in the, those camps. Then anyone who survives all the nations, Nations that have come against Jerusalem shall go up year after year and worship the king, Yahuwah of hosts, and they keep the feast of booths. And if any of the families of the earth do not go up to Jerusalem to worship the king, Yahuwah of hosts, there will be no rain on them. And if the family of Egypt does not go up and present themselves, then on them there shall be no rain. There shall be the plague with which Yahuwah afflicts the nations that do not go up to keep the feast of booths. This shall be the punishment to Egypt the punishment to all the nations that do not go up and keep the feast of booths. And on that day there will be in, inscribed on the bells of the horses, Holy to Yahweh, and the pots in the house of Yahweh shall be as the bowls before the altar. And every pot in Jerusalem and Judah shall be holy to Yahweh of hosts, so that all who sacrifice may come and take, take of them and boil the meat of the sacrifice in them. And there shall no longer be a traitor in the house of Yahweh, of hosts on that day. Luke twenty four thirteen through forty three. That very day, two among them were going to a village named Emas, about seven miles from Jerusalem, and they were talking with each other about all the things that they that had happened. While they were there talking and discussing t together, Yeshua himself drew near and went with them. And their eyes were kept from recognizing him. And he said to them, What is this conversation that you are holding with each other as you walk? And they stood still looking sad. And one of them named Cleopas answered him, Are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know the things that have happened there in these days? And he said to them, What things? And they said to him concerning Yeshua of Nazareth. A man who was a prophet, mighty in deed and word before Elohim and all the people, and how our chief priests and rulers delivered him up to be condemned to death and crucified. But we had hoped that there was one to be redeemed in Israel, yes, besides all this. It is now the third day since these things have happened. Moreover, some women in our company amazed us. They were at the tomb early in the morning, and when they did not find his body, they came back saying that they had even seen a vig vision of angels who said that he was alive. Some of those who were with us <coughs> went to the tomb and found it just as the women had said, but him they did not see. And he said to them, O oh, foolish ones, and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have spoken. Was it not necessary that Hamashiach should suffer? these things, and enter into his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interprets to them in all the scriptures the, the things concerning himself. So they drew near to the village to which they were going, he acted as if he were going further. But they urged him strongly, saying, Stay with us, for it is toward evening, and the day is now far spent. So he went to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took the bread and blessed and broke it and gave it to them. And their eyes were open, and they recognized him, and he vanished from their sight. They said to each other, Did not our hearts burn within us while, we, while he talked to us on the road, while he opened to us the scriptures? And they rose that same hour and returned to Jerusalem, and they found the eleven and those who were with them gathered together, saying, The Lord is risen indeed, and has appeared to Simon. And they were told what had happened on the road, and how he was known to them in the breaking of the bread. As they were talking about these things, Yeshua himself stood among them and said to them, Peace to you. But they were startled and frightened and thought they had seen the Spirit. And he said to them, Why are you troubled? And why do doubts arise in your hearts? See my hands and my feet, that it is myself. Touch me and see. For a spirit does not have flesh and bones as you see that I have. And when he had said this, he showed them his hands and his feet. And while they were, they still disbelieved for joy and were marveling, he said to them, Have you anything to eat? They gave him a piece of broiled fish, and he took it and ate it before them. Romans 30 through 10, 13.
What shall we say then? That Gentiles who do not pursue righteousness have attained it? That is a righteousness that is by faith. But that Israel who pursued a law that would not lead to that would lead to righteousness did not succeed in reaching that law? Why? Because they did not pursue it by faith. But as if it were based on works, they have stumbled over the stumbling stone as it is written, Behold, I am laying in Zion a stone of stumbling, a rock of offense, and whoever believes in him will not be put to shame. Brothers, my heart's desire and prayer to Elohim for them that for them is that they may be saved. For I bear them witness that I have a zeal for Elohim, but not according to knowledge, for being ignorant of the righteousness of Elohim and seeking to establish their own, they did not submit to Elohim's righteousness. For Hamashiach is the end of the law for the righteousness to everyone who believes. For Moses writes about the righteousness that is based on the law, but the people who does the commandments shall live by them. But the righteousness based on faith says, do not say in your hearts who will ascend into heaven, that is, to bring Hamashiach down, or who will ascend into the abyss, that is, to bring Hamashiach up from the dead. But what does it say? The, wor the word is near you, and your mouths and in your heart, that, that is, the word of faith that we proclaim, because if you confess with your mouth that Yahshua is Lord, because is Lord, and believe in your heart that Elohim raised him from the dead, you will be saved. For with the heart of one believes and is justified, and with the mouth of one confesses and is saved. For the scripture says, everyone who believes in him will not be put to shame. There is no distinction between Jews and Greek. For the Lord is Lord of all, bestowing his riches on all who call upon him. For anyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Thessalonians 4, 13-18 but we do not want you to be uninformed, brothers, about those who are asleep, that you may not grieve as others do who have no hope. For since we believe that Yesh Yeshua died and rose again, even so, through Yeshua, Elohim will bring with him those who have fallen asleep. For this we declare to you by a word of the Lord. That we who are alive, who are left until the coming of the Lord, who will not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will, send, will descend from heaven with a cry of command, with the voice of an archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in the Hamashiach will rise first. Then when those who are, who are alive, who are left, will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so we will always be with the Lord. Therefore, encourage one another with these words. Hebrews 12, 1-17 Therefore, since we are surrounded by so great a cloud of witnesses, let us also lay aside every weight and sin which clings so closely, and let us run with endurance the race that is set before us, looking to Yeshua, the founder and a perfecter of our faith who for the joy that was set before him endures the cross, despising the shame, and is seated at the right hand of the throne of Elohim. Consider him who endured from sinners such hostility against himself so that they may not grow weary or faint-hearted. In your struggle against sin, you have not yet resisted the point of shedding your blood. And you have forgotten the exhortation that address you as sons. My son, do not regard lightly the discipline of the Lord, nor be weary when repro reproved by him. For the Lord disciplines the one he loves, and chastises every son whom he receives. It is for discipline that you have, <coughs> that you have to endure. Elohim is treating you as sons. For what son is there whom his father does not discipline? If you are left without discipline in which all have participated, then you are an illegitimate ch children and not sons. Besides this, we have had earthly fathers who disciplined us and, res and we respected them. Shall we not much more be subjected to the Father of spirits as we live? For they disciplined us for a short time as, as it seemed best to them. But he disciplines us for our good that we may share his holiness. For the moment, 
all discipline seems painful rather than pleasant, but later it yields the peaceful fruit of righteousness to those who have been trained by it. Therefore lift your drooping hands and strengthen your weakened knees, and make straight the paths for your feet. So that what is lame may not be put out of joint, but rather be healed. Strive for peace with everyone, and for the holiness without which no one will see the Lord. See to it that no one fa fails to obtain the grace of Elohim, that no root of bitterness springs up and causes trouble, and by it many seem defiled, that no one is sexually immoral or unholy like Esau, who sold his birthright for a single meal. For you know that afterwards, when he desired to inherit the blessings, he was rejected, for he found no chance to repent, though he sought it with tears. Here's our end of Torah blessing. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, King of the universe, who gave us the Torah of truth and set everlasting life in our midst. Blessed art thou, Lord our God, giver of the Torah. B'shem Yeshua. Amen.